Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm not in my normal workroom today because I have all of my printers working and it is super noisy in there. So we're gonna kind of film this video uh, starting off here in the collection room where I'm actually doing some overhauling, uh, as you could probably see. But in today's video, I'm gonna go over the A to Z process that I do whenever I do 3D printing. So I had a lot of people write in and message me and ask me to go through the A to Z process of what I go through uh, to print my models, uh, all the way from design to cleaning and curing. But today, I'm going to go through that process for you. So I know I've made uh, different parts of this type of video before, but today I want to kind of put it all into one video so you can have that to reference by. So if you are new to 3D printing, this is probably the video for you. And if you've been doing this for a while and have had great success as to what you're doing, just watch the damn video. Just kidding, guys. Uh, seriously, if you are a pro at 3D printing, been doing this for a while, you got it all figured out, you know, take a look at the video and see if there's something that maybe you can, uh, a tip or two that you can get to culminate into what you do. Hey, and again, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel, check out my other videos. Got a lot of pretty cool paint tutorials and 3D printing tutorials. That's what we do here. So let's go ahead and start with part one, and that's selecting a model and putting it in the slicer. All right, everybody. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out a model here. And uh, I'm actually printing this Colossus Diorama by Wicked Art. So let's pick out the torso here. We're working with the Lenant Deck Printer. Uh, as you can see here, the parameters of the printing, this is what I use. Now, granted, every printer is going to be different. Every parameter is going to be different of how you print. And this is something you just really have to work at, something you just have to tweak. Uh, I recommend in looking at what the manufacturer's uh, recommendation is on your resin as far as exposure times. Uh, and this is what I've found that works best for me. Uh, and in an advanced mode, of course, I use uh, anti-aliasing level of two. And then uh, in here, you can actually factor in your resin costs if you want to, if you're trying to keep up with all of that. And of course, we have the machine right here. So once I have the model on the deck here, what I'm going to do is, because I'm printing this at a quarter scale, I'm actually going to increase this to 150%. So the way that you figure out your scaling is you need to find out from the modeler what current scale this is in. So Wicked actually makes all of their files of their models in 1 6 scale. And I know that going from 1 6 scale to 1 4 scale is basically 50%. So if it's coming from something like 1 10 scale, then you would increase that accordingly. It's all about mathematics, but it's very important that you know what scale this is originally done in. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through this fairly quickly because I have done this in a previous video on hollowing out your models, and you can check it out here in the corner. But what I'm gonna do first thing is I'm going to lay out my hollowing. I'm not gonna print this solid. I would eat up tons of resin and chances are it would uh, print fail anyway because it would be so heavy and it would break away from the supports. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hollow this out. And because it is a quarter scale model and it is a little bigger, I'm gonna do a wall thickness of 1.8. This is what I prefer. Um, smaller models, I do at 1.5. And it is a just matter of preference of what you want to do. And then the precision here, I'm actually gonna do this at 50%. And I do have infill structure that I put in of the grid 3D at 5%. What this does is this gives the model stability. It's not a true infill. You're not putting supports necessarily into the model. And you'll see that here in just a minute. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the process. So as you can see, the model is starting to go through the process and show you basically what the inside of your model is going to look like. So I can take this bar over here and I can go up and down and I can look and inspect and make sure there are no resin pockets or any place for any resin to get trapped in. And you can see the grid infill in here. It's not a true support, but it does keep the model from warping and being deformed. So I'm all good. Everything is good in that aspect. 
So the next thing that I want to do, and you must do this in a model. If you don't, you are asking for trouble. You must put drain holes. And so in my drain hole up here, I'm going to dig out a circle and I'm going to use a pretty good size drain hole, 10 millimeter with a depth of five millimeter. That's going to give me plenty of room to go into the model to dig into it. Then I'm going to add a hole. Then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to put a couple drain holes up here at the top. I'm going to put one or two here in the arm area on each arm area. And then on the bottom, I like to put as many drain holes as I possibly can. That way, again, I don't have any trapped resin and everything comes out okay. So now we're ready for supports. Once I turn everything over to the support, I use auto supports. I do not use pre-support files. Um, I find it easier to get better um, success out of auto supports. If you're using Lychee and you're using pre-supported files, good luck because Lychee hates pre-supported files. We are using Cheetubox today. Once I go through the auto-supported files, I will look again to make sure there are no issues with supports. Looks pretty good. And let's go back to the support settings. I want to show you one other thing that I do that's different than most people. And again, I went through this in a previous video. So I pretty much keep everything stock. The only thing different is the density percentage. And I think by default, it's at 50%. And I actually go down to 20%. And the reason I do this is because if you hold this over, you see how dense the supports can get on the model. So at 20%, that's plenty to hold the model in place and will not put a ton of supports on here, making it very difficult to remove supports and have all kinds of distortions from the divots from the supports themselves. And it's going to keep a lot of the detail, not to mention a lot less sanding. Once I am satisfied with that, then I'm going to go in and slice this. Okay, and so once you go through the slicing process, this will tell you of the elapsed time. It is never true to the printer itself, and it's always going to be more time on there. You can also find out the weight of your model and the volume, how many milliliters of resin this is probably going to take. Again, it's not always accurate, but it'll give you a good indication of what you're going to use. So once we're done there, you're going to actually save the file to your zip drive. Then you're going to put it into the printer to print. So let's do that and we'll move on to the next process. So one of the big factors I should point out when you're slicing a model is build plate orientation. It's very important to put the model on the build plate correctly. If not, you're subjective to a print fail. So one of the other reasons why I use auto supports because it takes the guesswork out of supporting the model uh, and does all the thinking for you. And I usually have very good results with that. If you're one of those people that like to put your supports on manually, then that's up to you. Uh, if you are using pre-supported files, again, that is totally uh, up to you, uh, but this is how I do it. All right, so after we get done slicing the model and we put it on the flash drive, it's a matter of just putting the flash drive into the printer and letting it do its work and being patient. And so once the model is complete, let's go in and take a look, pull the model off the build plate and check it out and see how it turned out. All right, guys, it is a little noisy in here. I do apologize about that. So the first thing you want to do is glove up. And I have to also apologize when I took this off the build plate, it just fell off. The supports just come off like butter. All of my supports came off very, very nice. Uh, there's little distortion um, from any of the divots on here whatsoever. Uh, it did turn out pretty well. And as you can see, this is a monster, monster piece. The only thing that happens sometimes is like right up here, and, and again, I'm trying to do this with one hand, is you see where the head goes in here. Uh, that right there doesn't always uh, process, but that's okay because, you know, the head's going on there, so it's going to be covered up. But that's a beautiful piece right there. Really, really well textured, uh, really good, and um, uh, it turned out really nice. So I do have one other piece that's coming off of the build plate here. So we're going to take that one and I'm going to show you how easy these supports come off. All right, so I do have some other parts of this diorama that just finished up 
on this Lenant Base 8K, and this is about the same build volume as a Mono X. All right, let's take it over here to the processing area. All right, guys, so here we go. Got the camera set up, and I apologize if it shakes a little bit. So I'm just going to pop these off the build plate. Like so, and as you can see, it comes off pretty well. And this, these supports should pop off pretty easy. Crunch them and yank them. Look at that, just very easy, comes right off, no problem at all. This one here should probably do the same thing. Comes right off, pops right off. So where you have some trouble are on some fine detail areas like this, but the way these supports are, as you can see, they just pop right off. I mean, they're, they're, they come off very easily with the, only the 20% the density percentage. I mean, they just pop right off. A lot of people use hot water or warm water to take supports off, and that's pretty cool. But with these here, I really don't have to do that. They just come off very easily. They just break right off. And just like so. And of course, that's a really well detailed piece. And the next thing that you move on to is cleaning and curing. So let's go into that part. All right, so I have a AnyCubic cleaning cure station here. And as you can see how dirty this thing is, I get quite a bit of usage out of it. So before I use this, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on this mask here because this alcohol is quite stifling if you're not careful. And then I'm going to set it for about five minutes and just let it do its thing. All right, so once your pieces are done, you're just essentially pulling them out of the alcohol, draining them really well. And I always keep a spare old toothbrush around here. If I see any residue, I'll actually scrape it off, dunk it back in the alcohol and get all that off. And then I just kind of set them so they can drain properly. Okay guys, so the next step after your print is dry, uh, you're wanting to cure it with a UV light. So you can use your UV station or you can get you a light like this. And I'm gonna show you what the little contraption I made up here. So this is just an ordinary tub that I cut the top out here. So that way I can put my prints inside here and just turn the light on right here and put it over the top to cure everything inside. Now what is inside? So essentially it's very easy and very inexpensive i just lined the inside of it with aluminum foil i taped up um, all the aluminum foil on the sides and everything and like i said i'll just take a piece or two or whatever and just put it in here like so i'll just set it in there and then turn on the light and set it on top of there for probably, I usually cure mine from anywhere from five to eight minutes. I'll flip it over, do the other side for five to eight minutes, uh, and it cures all the way around pretty much for the most part, and uh, you're done. So of course, if you have a nice sunny day outside, you could set your prints out on the deck or whatever like that, set them on a table outside and let them cure by the natural UV light for a few minutes. Uh, and you're good to go with those. And that's how I usually do my larger pieces that won't fit in the tub here. I'll wait until there's, the sun's out or whatever and go out and set them outside, let them cure, and be done with it. Now, what I'm gonna do in the winter time when there's no sun out, yeah, that's another story. Once everything's cured, the next thing is to post-process everything. So what that means is you're gonna go through and look at any other little blemishes and stuff that may be going on with the model itself. Like little things like you get little support things right here. You can just, you know, cut off or whatever. And this is where you go in and do your sanding. Uh, I use all kinds of different grades of sandpaper. I also use this G tool and there is an affiliate link below. If you would like to get a hold of one of these, what this is really good for is for polishing and for getting some of those divots out of the, your sports made. Now, if you're working in FDM, it's pretty much the same process. You're going to go through the model 
and you're going to see what areas need to be sanded down um, and take care of that. You can also putty that stuff as well. This is part of a Tengen portal model that I'm working on. This was printed at 200%. And as you can see, this FDM right here was just, it printed very, very nice. And so, um, yeah, we're going to do a little bit more FDM printing on this channel eventually. Um, but I love the solidarity of this and uh, it's very, very functional. Yeah, so once you get everything sanded down, filled, all that good stuff, the next thing you want to do is put a nice coat of primer on. So that way you have a very good detailed model like this Wolverine right here uh, that is ready for paint. But just keep in mind that the better your model is prepped and ready for paint, the easier it will go on you. So this guy's next. He's ready for paint, or actually he's ready for primer. And then uh, it's time to paint old Wolvie here. All right, guys. So I hope you got something out of this video and hopefully you're on your way to printing something big and massive and very exquisite like this guy right here. And hey, I can't make a video without thanking my patrons. And if you would like to become a member of the Patreon, there's a link below in the description. And joining the Patreon does give you exclusive access to the private Discord. And we have a new member this week, Fragged3D. Welcome aboard and thank you for joining the Patreon and becoming our newest member. And as usual, everybody, stay safe out there. Get out and create something. Print, prep, paint, repeat. And until the next video, We'll see you. Jeez, I am never, ever gonna get caught up, y'all. Help.